Hey guys, welcome to another episode of El Jefe's Chop Shop. This week, I'm going to try and get this lathe working and fix my tripod. So I've inherited this lathe from a good friend of mine, Pete. So he's an old race car guy, absolute legend of a bloke, and he left me this because I'm the only one that used it. Basically, he put it in slightly different words, uh, but they're not exactly family friendly. So this needs a reset button. So when I used this last time at Pete's house, probably many months ago, uh, the plastic on the reset button, it's just one of those like push in, turn, and it pops back out. So when I turned it to pop back out, it just popped out and disappeared into the shed. Pete has found the parts in here somewhere and not fixed it. So this has been broken for a few months and this was an existing problem before I touched it. Uh, but I, because I was the only one that used it, it's not been fixed because he was probably waiting for me to come back around and fix it. So let's jump in, see how we go and try and work out what lathe this is, what size this is. I've got no idea. Let's dive into it. So here is the lathe. It's probably a four foot model or something like that. Um, it's got a fairly decent swing on it, so it's got a removable bed, uh, this section here. And you can actually fit a 14 inch rim in there, just. We have done it and we split a uh, three piece wheel. So this has a date on it, which is November 92, which means it's 31 years old. So it also has a serial number, which is the machine number. It has a type, which I can't really read. C06230, I think, but I can't see. A brand. So apparently it's in, in millimeters, which is good. And then whatever that says is very faded. I'd love to find some photos and be able to print off what all these gauges are supposed to be and say because stuff like this one, two, and three, and then ABC. But then uh, one of these two has a graph to tell you which gear to put it in, spindle speeds and stuff. So that's a later problem. So what I need to do is get into this housing here to access the back of that guy, I'm pretty sure. So I will clear off this stuff up the top, I'll move the press out the way, and we'll dive in. So my goal for today is to get this thing working. So I've actually just had a quick clean up and found the reset button and the spring, so I might be able to just pop that back in and just dodgy it for now. But what I want to get to today is get this thing working and then also make a small adapter to make my tripod taller. And also if you saw the shakes in the video uh, a couple of weeks ago. The reason that that was is because this actually came undone from the shaft inside. So if I extend it, I'm gonna stake everything and make sure it cannot be twisted and undone and end up shaky like the other week. So I'll try and put that reset button back in and see if I can actually get this thing to turn on and then I'll go from there. If that's all it is, then I know that that's correct and working. I'll try and find a replacement switch in the shed and we can put something there instead. So I've tried putting the reset button back in. It doesn't seem to be that simple. So I want to get into access to the back of these switches. Now I'm not sure if I should take this front fascia off, take this top plate off, or take the back off. But the back swings open. So what I'm going to do is move this press out the way. Just have a quick look in there. Then if that's not the access hatch, then I can go for any of the other two options. So I'll just shuffle all this, which is quite heavy, and it'll take a couple minutes. But then I can get access to the back of the switch, hopefully. And now I have access to the end of the lathe, so I can undo the two knobs. And then open the end panel. Which I thought was on a hinge, it is not. Also gives me zero access, so I'm gonna put that straight back on. So with no luck there, I'm gonna try and take this fascia off. So it looks like there's two screws on each knob. It does look like there's a roll pin on there, so whether I need to undo the roll pin or not is a different question. And I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is just try and undo these little flat head screws and try and just pry this a little bit. See if we can get any access from the back of that. If not, I'm going to have to take the top off. The lathe stopped, not mine. Don't get worried. Probably a good time to note this is unplugged from the power. 
So with that undone, I can get to the back of this panel, which gets me to the switches. However, without being able to get this off all the way, it's not quite that easy. So I'll grab an Allen key, try and undo these, and hopefully I don't have to touch those roll pins because they suck. So it turns out these Allen keys are just a detent to hold the lever in place. So I'm going to have to try and either take the roll pin out or try and undo this handle. So I'll grab some pliers and try and undo the handle first because I do not want to deal with that roll pin. Alright, so luckily we can just crack those and they will come straight out. So it turns out the reset button wasn't working because the back of the switch exploded. It's pretty excellent. It's also been fixed before. You need to press the power button, it probably helps. Right, so I remember the lathe having a problem that it wouldn't actually spin up the speed, so it obviously needs a new motor or something. But that is now working. Might have to put a new motor on it at some point. But for now, it's spins. So, that reset button can just hang out like that really, it doesn't actually matter. So while I'm in here, I'll try and get this reset button on the outside of this panel, so that I can do it for later. For now, it's not super important. So I've gotten everything back together. The reset switch is disconnected. Now the problem with this is the reset switch is in a million pieces. All of the replacements I have are in a million pieces. And the only one I have that is anywhere near like what we want is massive. So what I'm gonna have to do for now is hopefully just touch those two together and that will tell the reset to turn off and we should be good to go. So I need to turn power start on, we need to plug it back in, and we should be able to just connect those two together. Should be at the sale. I'm not sure what voltage this is, so I could probably put a 12 volt little um, switch from JCAR on there, which is probably what I'll end up doing. But for now, we'll just see if we can get it to work. So, got power, power start won't do anything. If we put these two together, Be awkward obviously and then press start you hear that click so now the light will turn off now if we disconnect these two you can hear it unclick so there's obviously a big relay or solenoid back there so what i'm gonna do for now is just tape these guys together and not have a reset switch which is probably not the best idea but it'll work for right this second so this is the back of what's left of the switch if i can actually just put it straight back on there so i will and then i can still press the reset button if i need to Okay, we got those two wires back on the switch, so it's just external now instead of internal. Plug the lathe back in, should be able to press the power start, and then if we press the button in here, it should click again. Excellent. So that's working quite well. So it's later in the day and I've had time to go to the shop, so I went to JCAR and got a replacement switch. So I'm pretty sure this is almost identical. I say that with a bit of hesitation because it won't fit now. Um, this is the part number, SP0786. It was about $20. So I'll rip all this apart and we should hopefully be able to just put those two wires onto those two terminals, or those two, and put it back together. So let's get into it. That easy. Reset button. Working. Mint. So now we can turn it on, you hear the click, press the reset button, you hear it click off. So that works. So you turn this on. Cool. That was really good and really easy. So it was literally $19 for that switch and it took me 10 minutes. So super happy with that. Now we have a fully operational lathe. It's also kind of funny how these two switches have nice knurling on them, and this one does as well. Whereas the one that I took off does not. So that actually matches better than the one that I had. 
So after spending a few minutes looking for my tripod, I picked up the camera that was on the tripod. So what I want to do is make a small bush that will go inside of here and outside of that pole there. You can grub screw it all together and I'll make this tripod a whole lot longer and then I can put some grub screws in and just tighten everything, make it all nice and fixed. So to do that I have a slug of aluminium up there so I'll try and turn down the outside diameter to this guy and just see how we go. I haven't used a lathe in a very long time. I used to own one, but well now I own one again, I guess. It's five years in the middle. So you might be thinking that I know what I'm doing. You would be wrong. All I know is I need to turn this guy down to 17 millimeters. So let's give that a go. I'll track you guys on time lapse and we'll try and turn this into not scrap. Now that this is at a diameter that I should be able to press or tap that together. So what I want to do is put another step in it, which is why I was not too fussed about trying to work out the diameter here. I'll put another step in it for that other size tube. So let's work on that. I'll do about an inch and then I'll have about an inch of tube going into this piece and then hopefully I've got enough material to do another one because I will need a second. Before I get too carried away, I'm going to do something really stupid and I don't want to change the dimensions on this guy. So what I want to do is try and flip this around and see if I can get it to line up with cutting in the other side. So let's give that a go. This could go poorly. So that genuinely worked really well. You can't see where the seam is. I know where it is because I did it. But it's just about here somewhere. So pretty happy with that. It's definitely within tolerance for what I need. So now let's try and turn this down to that size and then this whole rod front to back is the same size as the thing in my hand. So let's dive into the second operation. Now with this part done, you can take it out of the lathe and it should resemble two halves. So I need to cut this thing in half. This half will go into the bigger tube, this half will go into the smaller tube, and they can put a grub screw in either half. So, that's excellent. Let's clean up this tube because the ends aren't very good. Spin it around, do the other side. So the next step is to work out how long this piece is. Call it about 63, so half of that is 31 and a half. So we'll go to about there. Again, this none of it matters. It's just for interest's sake, to be honest. So right about there-ish is all I need to be precise for. Make sure this doesn't hit on anything. Now for this next step, I like to call this one the correct tool the wrong way, or the wrong tool the correct way. I just remember that I'm going to have to face this anyway, so I might as well just cut it in half. So I've parted off the original tripod, I've got the piece that I made. So the idea now is that these two should fit together with a slight press. Now my machine is not great, so this might not work or it might work really well, we shall see. Well, I'm very happy with that. That could not have fit any better, to be honest. <laughs> so now to do the same thing with the longer piece and the other retainy guy. And from memory, this one doesn't fit as tight. So I might be able to do this one with a hammer. So obviously there was slightly tapered, so I can chuck it back in the lathe and clean up that, which I might do, but that fits pretty good. So now that will go into the tripod and lock down, and we've got the extension piece, which I'd like to go on there, which is very loose, and then the other extension piece, which screws into the bottom of the actual piece that holds the camera. 
I'm too short for this. And that can go in the top there. And now I have the world's most ridiculous tripod and it's only got heaps of wobble in it. So my phone went flat and unsurprisingly uh, I just went on with it. So we are finished. That's the tallest setting and it is probably a foot taller than I am. So all I did was uh, tap in here and then put a bolt in and then the same down here and everything else fits together nicely. So ridiculous, a little wobbly, but way better than what I had which was a tripod that stared at my neck. So now I can actually film outros. Outros like this one. Look at the angle. How much better is that? I'm glad we got this lathe up and running. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next week.